Hi everyone, I'm Yuan from Acuity. I'm a maintainer of Argo Workflows and co-chair of Kubeflow Training Working Group. Hi everyone, I'm Andre. I'm the software engineer at Apple, and also I'm the co-chair of Working Group uh, Automel and Training in Kubeflow. So today we're going to speak about how we leverage Argo Workflow in Kdeep and how we can manage thousands of automated machine learning experiments uh, with this integration. So let me first jump to the Qflow. So Kdeep is part of Qflow umbrella. Uh, so if you don't like know, Qflow is the open source project for MLOps on top of Kubernetes. Uh, Qflow contains different uh, components uh, to perform a uh, different way of ML activities, such as uh, has a known solution for notebooks, Jupyter Labs, also has the components for distributed training operator with wide support of open source uh, ML frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, XGBoost, and MPI. Also, Qflow leverages the functionality of ML metadata and has an own, own component for ML pipelines, which I think many of you know about. Also, Qflow has a component for AutoML, specifically Kdeep, for hypervariant tuning and neural network search. And we have this serving component for model serving in clouds, which uh, with a lot of like very unique functionality. Also, Qflow can be easily deployed on any sort of the public clouds or on-prem and can offer the PyPI interface SDKs or kubectl to make interaction with these components. Uh, let me jump to the Kdeep because this will be our main focus in this presentation. So Kdeep, as I mentioned before, is part of the Qflow uh, um, components. And it's uh, the project for AutoML, specifically for HP tuning, early stop making neural network search. In the meantime, we are working on making additional support for feature engineering and model compression to allow you to do other like uh, AutoML features on top of the cloud. Also, you can run Kdeep to perform your custom AutoML algorithms. So we provide you a platform to do it like in a cloud native way. Also, we can uh, have a like, unique feature to actually orchestrate any Kubernetes custom resources. And I will just jump to this to the next couple of slides, how we can do it. And since we run on top of the Kubernetes, we are like agnostic to ML frameworks and we have a native integration with Qflow components such as training, notebooks, and the pipelines. So jumping to the KDIP architecture, it's quite straightforward. So when the user submits the experiment, we have the experiment controller, which is reconcile this experiment. Uh, and then we have a suggestion controller, which is responsible to spawn the algorithm service. When the alg algorithm service is the uh, completed the couple of service, which is produce the hyperparameters based on the experiment specification. Then these hyperparameters pass to the trial controllers and trial controller basically spawns trial in the parallel execution. So we have a unique feature to support any type of the trial worker to be run as a trial, whether it can be a simple commercial job, TF job, or even Argo workflow. And in this worker, you basically produce a training, and then we have a metrics collector, which parse the necessary uh, necessary metrics from the workers and send this, met uh, send this metrics to the DB. Then this metrics passed back to the experiment controller, and uh, the, we're getting this evaluation results to the algorithm service. Uh, to produce new hyperparameters. This process repeated again and again. Uh, when the hyperparameter tuning job is finished, a uh, user can get the best hyperparameters and use them in production training. So jumping to why we actually need Argo and what are the current problems we have. Uh, the main problem that um, in the evaluation step in hyperparameter tuning, we have a couple of problems such as usually the training process is not like quite straightforward when you can just perform a simple job to run your training. Maybe you need to run some pre-processing data. Maybe you want to run some post-processing data. And all of these steps can be done during your evaluation. So basically, uh, the simple Kubernetes job uh, doesn't like uh, give us the functionality to cover all these problems. And that is why we moving forward to using the complicated workflow such as Argo to be able to um, uh, resolve these issues. All, also have a problems with the multi objective optimization when we want to tune uh, high, tune experiment in the different objective. And also we can do some parallel training with which Yuan will be talking about in the next couple of slides. So next, let me just pass to Yuan and he will speak about the Argo flows and how we can solve these problems. With all those challenges in real-world machine learning pipelines, I'm going to talk about how Algo workflows makes it easy and then introduce a few common use cases for machine learning pipelines. 
So our Argo workflows is a container native workflow engine for Kubernetes. The main use cases for Argo workflows include machine learning pipelines, data processing, ETL, infrastructure automation, continuous delivery, and integration. On the right-hand side is a screenshot of what the uh, Argo workflows UI looks like. The diagram at the bottom gives some example ecosystem projects that use Argo workflows. More can be found at the Arxum Argo GitHub repository linked below. Let's first talk about memorization cache functionality in Argo workflows that will be leveraged when dealing with the pre-processing challenges that Andrew mentioned previously. Argo Workflows controller creates cache which can save the output of a step to be used in a next step. For example, here step B requires the output from the previous step A. When the workflow is executed for the first time, Argo Workflows will create a cache for step A. The cache contains the result of step A and is saved as a key value pair in a Kubernetes config map. Once step A finishes, step B will be executed. The next time, so when the same workflow executes again, it will check whether a cache from step A already exists and whether it's still fresh. For example, if the cache is created 10 seconds ago and that step B thinks this is fresh, it will retrieve the saved output from the cache and use it directly in step B without wasting resources and time to re-execute step A. Here's how to use the memorization functionality in Argo workflows. In the template spec on the left-hand side, we can specify the memorization spec. Here we specify the key in the cache to be cache key. The max age represents the maximum duration before we consider a cache uh, as old when future workflows or steps try to use the cache. We also specify the name of the config map that we want to save the cache to. Here's what the config map looks like on the right hand side. The key is cache key and the data contains the output parameter produced from this particular step which is the parameter hello with value world. Let's take a real world machine learning workflow as an example to see how memorization can be leveraged. Assume that we triggered a CATIP experiment that executes a machine learning pipeline using Argo workflows. A simple machine learning workflow may look like this. First, there's data ingestion step that's responsible for ingest data uh, from the data source. You may have a cache store that's in place using Argo or Kubernetes to check whether the data has been updated or not recently in order to skip this particular data ingestion step if nothing changes in the data set. Otherwise, you would have to execute that data ingestion from scratch, which costs a lot of computational resources. After we've ingested the data, we start model training step. The model training can have multiple workers and multiple data shards, depending on the selected distributed training, training strategy. Here, for example, we are running the distributed model training step using or reduce. The model training may consist of code written in frameworks such as TensorFlow or PyTorch, and then you can use Kubeflow to submit a distributed TensorFlow training job so that the algorithm developers or data engineers, they don't have to worry about the infrastructure side of things. Kubeflow will communicate with Kubernetes requests necessary uh, to request necessary computational resources for each of the workers and parameters so that TensorFlow can just focus on the algorithms or the models. We can also use Katib for more complicated model training that leverages hyperparameter tuning neural architecture search, early stopping, and so on. Let's take a look at uh, uh, how this can be achieved with Argo workflows. On the left-hand side, we define the entry point of the workflow, which consists of sequential steps for both data ingestion and distributed TensorFlow training. The data ingestion step takes a parameter that represents the location of the data that we will save to uh, once the data ingestion is finished. 
in the data ingestion step, we save the data set to the specified S3 path and then cache the location with the max, max uh, age of one hour. And then in the distributed model training step, we are training a TensorFlow model using Kubeflow's TF job with the data set that we just saved. When this workflow gets executed again within an hour, the data ingestion step will be skipped and the training step will reuse the previously generated data set. Next, let's take a look at the more complex pipeline that involves multi-objective optimization in order to achieve better overall performance for a machine learning problem. Here, we'd like to build three different models with three different model, model architectures, such as logistic regression, neural networks, and decision trees, and with different objectives. Uh, uh, here, we're using accuracy, AUC, and loss. Um, there are two different data ingestion uh, steps that ingest uh, two different data sets. The decision tree model will use the different data set and the other models. After that, uh, after we've trained, uh, finished training these three models, we then trigger a cut heap experiment that collects the metrics and suggestion uh, and suggests uh, an optimized set of uh, hyperparameters. Once a suggestion is made, we will trigger a new workflow that uses the suggested hyperparameters. Here's how to implement this pipeline in Argo workflows. First, we construct the DAG that consists of the major components that we showed in the previous diagram. The data ingestion step consists sub-steps to execute data ingestion from two different data sources. We use the with sequence syntax to loop through different data sources. The model training steps consist uh, step templates for different model types, different data sources, and objectives. We assume that the single model training template used in this model training steps support these different, uh, different parameters. Next, Andre will give a live, live demo. Thanks, Yuan. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to give you a demo regarding to the cache, how we can leverage this in Kedip. Uh, let me quickly jump to the UI, first of all. So uh, this is Kubeflow UI. Uh, I hope <laughs> maybe you're familiar with that. Uh, I'm going to jump directly to the Kedip one, which is part of the Kubeflow umbrella. So as you can see here, this is Kedip UI, uh, where we can uh, submit new experiments. We can specify the necessary information for your hyperparameter experiment, such as metadata, uh, trial threshold, for example, how many trials you want to run in parallel, what is the maximum number of trials? What is the maximum file number of trials? Also, you can specify the objective. So the main metrics you want to tune, the additional metrics you want to collect, the goal for your objective metrics, and other extra information. So for the search algorithm, Katip out of the box supports a variety number of different algorithms. We continually evolve into adding new algorithms and given even like, as I mentioned before, provide an option to de deploy custom algorithms. Uh, we can also specify the earliest of the techniques to avoid overfitting for your hyperparameter tuning experiment. Then we can set the hyperparameters, we can add new parameter, we support a various number of distributions, such as categorical, categorical discrete double, sorry, a categorical double integer and discrete. So we can specify the range of the hyperparameters, you can specify the step, you can also edit the hyperparameters. Then we can jump to the metrics collector uh, specification and to the trial template, which is actually executing the training during your hyperparameter evaluation. So in this particular example, I want to take the example with uh, our workflow as trial template. And let me just copy, first of all, the whole YAML to our UI. And just to submit this experiment before we can analyze the results. Uh, so before I'm jumping to this uh, UI, I just want to quickly introduce what kind of experiment we are running. So we're running a simple uh, KTIP experiment with the ARC workflow as a trial. So in terms of in, in, in terms of the objective, we're going to tune validation accuracy uh, with the additional metrics that we're going to collect is the training accuracy. So for, for the algorithm, we just select a simple random algorithm and we're going to run two parallel trials and the maximum number of trials of five. So basically in this example, each trial is the Argo workflow. 
So we're going to trial are going to spawn this separate Argo flow in parallel and going to execute the uh, the workflow inside the Argo uh, inside the Argo flow. So basically, we're going to tune learning rate and uh, with these kind of ranges. And let me jump directly to the trial template. So what you need to specify in a trial template to be able to run Argo flow, you just need to send, uh, set primary pod labels, uh, primary container name, the success condition when your workflow is finished, and the failure condition when your workflow is failed. So in terms of the workflow, if you're familiar with Argo, it will be very easy to understand how it looks like. Basically, we have two steps. The first step is data pre-processing, and the second step is the model training. So in the first step, uh, data pre-processing, we're going to generate the number of examples. So this is a super simple toy example, but just show like the power of using Argo and Kedip because you can have a very complicated pre-processing here. And as Yuan mentioned before, we can store the value of pre-processing in the cache. So basically we generating the random value and we try to store this value in the cache. And then we reusing this value in the next, um, in next uh, workflows to not like run pre-processing again and again. And then we just basically pass this number of examples to our second step, which is model training. So as we can see here, we're getting the number of examples from the previous step and we're getting the learning rate from the uh, suggested KTIP parameters. Uh, then we can uh, run this training with these two parameters. So the first one is number of examples and the second one is learning, uh, learning rate. And then we run training. So uh, again, as I mentioned before, uh, memorization is very important because you don't want to run pre-processing for, uh, maybe you just want to run it uh, only once. And in the next step of the evaluation, you just want to run only training and collect the metrics, uh, which is important for hyperparameter job. So let me jump back to the KDPY. As we can see here, uh, the experiment is currently running. This is the experiment I ran before. In this UI, we can analyze that we can get the optimized, optimized trial. We can see some of the metrics that we collected. We can jump to the uh, to this UI just to see what is the name of the experiment, what is the current status, what is the best trial for now, what is the best trial performance. Uh, also, we can see some experiment conditions. Uh, we can jump to the trials just to see their metrics, their validation, their metrics that we collect, uh, the best hyperparameters, and also we can see some distributions in this UI. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, each trial here is a separate Argo workflow. So uh, we can jump even to the Argo workflow UI. And we're going to see that, for example, let me take one of the KDP trials. So for example, this one, and we're going to see this. This is like represent the whole Argo workflow. And inside Argo workflow, we have uh, different steps. So let me jump to the one of the you uh, one of the workflows here. So basically, we uh, we have the data preprocessing step, which is storing value in the cache, and then we have a model training, which just reuses value from a cache. So as we can see here, we basically have a number of six uh, seven six nine, and we if we're going to check other workflows, we're going to see the same number for each step. So if we're going to here, we we can see seven six six nine again. And if I click to the model training, uh, I'm going to see the exactly training which is happening and we just collect the results from the training basically. So uh, this is very powerful. And again, uh, jumping to the UI, uh, we can click to the trial, we can see which metrics have been collected, how the metrics are going to produce. Uh, you also can analyze the data based on these trials. So you can see uh, what is the like performance which is produced. You can also like collect more metrics if you need. So just to use this UI in terms of like the metrics tracking uh, uh, process. And also you can see some details of the experiment. So this is a very simple example, but at the end, you can create more sophisticated ex examples. You can, again, as Jan mentioned, you can create even uh, some uh, multi-objective experiments with the deck when you have like more than one model which rank in parallel in one evaluation step. And you can even run whatever you want, which Argo workflow offers. So let me jump back to our presentation. And at the end, I really want to quickly mention a couple of slides regarding the community, because all of these uh, amazing features won't be available without uh, the great work from the open source community. So uh, if you want to uh, check this experiment and just try to run it by yourself, you can follow this guide. Uh, also, I strongly encourage you to uh, join the Argo Flow and KDB community meetings. So we meet uh, almost every week. 
and we have, we're pretty open to the new contributors. We're pretty, pretty open to the new proposals and so the future requests that uh, we can integrate in our projects. Also, please uh, check our GitHub repositories, our Slack channels. And if you're using KDP or Argo, please update the adopters list. So we really want to have interaction with the customers to see what kind of pain point you have and what is, should be our like, next roadmap. And if you want to learn more about KDP, please check this presentation list um, to learn about more about AutoML and how we use it in the, within Argo. Uh, and just at the end, uh, please feel free to, um, to uh, just ping us if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer all of your questions. With that, thank you so much for listening to us. We're more than happy to answer all of your questions. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, everyone, for, <clears throat> for watching our pre-recorded video today. Um, so uh, Andre will be on our Agocon Slack for any offline discussions and questions. And I'll be here for our Q&A. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, and I can answer them now. Uh, raise your hand if you have any questions. No questions? So how many of you are working in machine learning related uh, applications? OK, I, I see a couple of hands. Are you using Argo workflows? OK. What do you use for like distributed training, for example? Sorry, I can't hear you. SageMaker? OK. Do you find it easy enough for you to run all sorts of experiments? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys uh, will try out many of the sub projects available in Kubeflow. And we have uh, distributed training operators. And there's a project called Heap that we just mentioned. It's for managing AutoML experiments. And there are a lot of built in algorithms, uh, for example, hyperparameter tuning and uh, architecture search and so on. Yes. Um, ooh, I have an intern uh, pursuing a master's degree, and we have him doing a machine learning um, research project, but I don't think he's picked his um, tech stack yet, actually. So kind of like more generally, I was looking for something that I could take back to him and kind of show him this, because uh, probably gives him pro most everything he needs, I think, maybe. I, he'll, he'll know better than I do. So like... Like just like basic, um, like some of the same stuff you showed here. Is there any of that? Like I could like, is it going to be basically like a, like I could get like your Slack information or something and like introduce him so he can maybe get some help with his project. Yeah, I, uh, my recommendation is if you are running things uh, uh, in the cloud or on Kubernetes already, Argo workflows will be the de facto choice uh, for workflow orchestration and. Uh, since it's really scalable and uh, easy to use. And if you're running um, distributed machine training, especially on Kubernetes, then Kubeflow training operator is definitely something you want to look into because uh, you can describe a distributed training job in a CRD. Uh, it's very easy to use once you install the operators. Uh, yeah. Yes? Is it possible to run KTIP without uh, the Kubeflow infrastructure? For example, we have, say, Argo and Metaflow sort of uh, integrated for distributed training. Can I leverage KTIP independently from the Kubeflow? Uh, but you still want to use Katip, right? Yeah, so Katip is kind of independent uh, of uh, other, independent on other uh, Kubeflow ecosystem. Like you can run any custom CRD uh, as an experiment, as a trial, and then you can spin up a lot of experiments using Katip. And then um, within Katip, using Katip, you can also like automatically uh, start in different experiments with different parameters 
uh, if needed. So if you have, if you can describe your SageMaker job in in terms of a CRD or a uh, script, then uh, I think you can use it directly. So somebody um, developing this, how much skillful they need to be in Argo workflows, writing all the, the workflows and uh, writing the DAGs and all that stuff. So, so how, much, how much skillful do they need to be when writing the DAGs and the Argo workflow syntax? How much skillful? How, how much skills do they need to? Uh... It's just like Kubernetes CRDs. And once you install the controllers, you can just write everything in your YAML. And there's also like Python SDK, uh, Java, and Go SDK that you can also use. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to use. Yeah. So now, like, if you're a Python developer, uh, if you are one of the data scientists in our company, uh, you can just use one of our uh, SDKs. Where? Do they need to know Argo workflows? Uh, yes, you would need to know the, the basic concepts. But there's also integration. So I know you mentioned Metaflow, right? Uh, they also added the integration with Argo workflows so that you don't have to understand all the concepts behind workflows. You can just write the regular Metaflow um, steps and then underlying it will invoke the, and create Argo workflows uh, without having the users to worry about it. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions from here? No? OK, uh, we, we can take additional questions offline, either on the ArgoCon Slack, and I'll be at the Acuity um, booth if you want to stop by. Thank you. <laughs>